There are huge things going on in the country right now. We have Tucker Carlson. He's going to join us in a few minutes to discuss those things. We have a huge show for you on I'm Right. But when you do a television sh show, you generally want to lead with the big deal. Whatever the biggest deal is, That's that's you want that to be your A block, right? It's considered A block, the start of the show. What is the biggest deal? Me. As of yesterday, that's the six-year anniversary of me stopping the normal life I was living. Remember, I've lived just a very normal life my whole life, construction and RV sales. I used to wash cars, and I started doing media. Six years ago, yesterday, started out on a local radio station, KPRC, wonderful station here in Houston, a 7 o'clock at night show, just nighttime show for one hour, and six years later, I'm right here on the first nationally syndicated radio show talking to Tucker in a couple minutes. I don't, I didn't even want to tell you this to say anything inspirational. I just wanted to brag. I think it's really cool what's happened. No, seriously, what a blessing it's all been. And speaking of Tucker Carlson, so he's got this huge tour he's doing. He's doing a live speaking tour in various cities. There's all kinds of famous people on there, Don Jr. and all kinds of people are on there. When he comes to my city in the Houston area, it's not Houston proper, when he comes to the Houston area, I am going to be joining him on September 18th. It's just him, me, on stage, couple hours, riffing on politics, go get some tickets. But you know, Tucker and I have done this kind of thing before. We don't need a military that's woman-friendly. We don't need a military that's gay-friendly, with all due respect to the Air Force. We need a military that's flat-out hostile. We need a military full of type A men who want to sit on a throne of Chinese skulls. And soon you're Chelsea Handler. Soon it's Valentine's Day, and your womb resembles a dried-up tumbleweed blowing down an old western town. And your Valentine's Day date for the 10th year in a row is a 10-year-old copy of Magic Mike and a half-full bottle of Xanax, and you're trying to pretend like you're happy everybody watching you right now has worked for or worked yeah. with somebody who just has ambition just dripping off of their pores and that's Kamala that's right. Harris those types of people will do anything to get ahead they treat their bosses like crap they treat their employees like crap that's why she knifed Joe Biden in the debate with all that race nonsense there was no need to do yeah. that it's exactly. the same reason she cackles like a dead hyena every time she's asked an uncomfortable question it's the same reason she started out her political career as Willie Brown's bratwurst bun Kamala Harris will do anything to get ahead so he either doesn't vote in primaries that's most mostly the case. He's just going to sit at home or even worse, he goes to vote for Senator Dork, who he sees on Fox News every time. Well, Lindsey Graham was on, on Fox tonight. I guess he's, he's on my side. You should have nothing but disdain for virtually every single senator you see on Fox News. Normal people are getting sick and tired of no action and they're running these people out. It's happening. It's happening slowly maybe too slowly, uh, too slowly when you consider the fact that the federal government is gleefully destroying this country. I haven't seen these people this happy since Pete Buttigieg and his husband took their baby home. Joining me now, the man himself, Tucker Carlson. He's coming to the great state of Texas, Houston area, Rosenberg, Texas. I get to join him on stage and that is always a good time. Tucker, obviously you have Dan and Megan and these people are of course friends of mine, but clearly the headliner is going to be me. Well, there's no doubt. And we were just talking off camera and I meant this sincerely. There are a lot of really smart people I like to listen to, but a live venue is totally different and it... It takes a certain kind of personality. You can tell who loves dealing with actual people and who'd rather be hidden away in a radio studio. And you are in the former category. I, I was <laughs> talking to the person who's managing the tours like, Jesse Kelly, you watch will be great at this because you, you <laughs> like actual people. So I can't wait. Well, I mean, so much of our politics really comes down to that, doesn't it, Tucker? I mean, a genuine love of people. Either you have it or you don't. Yes. Either, either you care that Americans can't afford groceries or you don't. And it's not a socioeconomic thing. It, but sadly, right. there aren't any Democrats that think like that anymore. But either you feel genuine sadness that people are moving back in with their parents or you don't. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, the world is divided between people who care about the people and those who care about people. In other words, it's easy to love an abstraction. You know, I love beauty. I love truth. Yeah. I love love. But it's <laughs> much harder to love like, 
you know, a crying five-year-old with snot on his face, you know, or a wife who's mad at you for reasons you don't really understand. Like, that's what it means to love in real life is to love people in all their complexity and imperfection, even unfashionable people like the white working class who are dying at a younger age. Like, no one in Washington even thinks about them. They're just like some repulsive afterthought as we move on to this brand new America that doesn't speak English. But um, the only politicians I like are the ones who like people, and there just aren't that many. No, that there, there aren't that many. Okay, and so I do want to point something out. Tucker has this great series coming out. I don't want to give too much away, but here's, here's a trailer for The Art of the Surge. Here it is. Biden's just taken the stage of the debate. The standard is not, are you able to stand up for 90 minutes? I can't even understand him right no. now. Trump is like riding a great racehorse, right? You put the blinders on, you guide him into the corners, and you let him run. Look at how many people are showing up for a rally. Yeah! Everyone, please, just make sure you're ready. 30 seconds. Let's go, Tucker, okay, I know this is going to be at TuckerCarlson.com. I know that, you know, the people can't exactly consume it here, but what is this all about? I have no doubt the assassination attempt of Donald Trump and Butler is going to be part of it. Well, yeah, it's a, we embedded a, a producer and a camera crew with the Trump campaign at the beginning of the summer, and they've been with him on the plane at, you know, all the events backstage, and they happen to be there you know, right near Trump, right just feet away from Trump when he was shot. Um, and so that's the first installment of this series, which will extend through the fall. Um, but, it, you know, for people who haven't covered, I mean, you, you've you run for office. I've covered a lot of people running for office. But until you've seen what it's like, you know, outside of the rope line, um, it's, it's really instructive to see what it actually looks like to run a, a, a campaign. And you understand... The player is much better. In this case, Donald Trump, who I know you know him, and anyone who knows Trump can tell you he's exactly the same in private as he is in public, except funnier and probably more vulgar. Um, but he's just, he's not a different person. He's like a person you like even more. So its I think it's cool. It's a window into that. Speaking of a window into things, I, I, I still think about this assassination attempt, the timing of it, so many things, and I'm old enough to remember you going on Adam Carolla's show and saying this. We're speeding toward assassination, obviously, and no one will say that, but I don't, I don't know how you can't reach that conclusion. You know what I mean? Like, they have decided, permanent Washington, both parties have decided that there's something about Trump that's that's so threatening to them, they just can't have him. Tucker, that was pre-assassination attempt, as I'm sure you remember. You saw this horrific thing coming, so they tried to imprison him. Supreme Court rules on immunity, immunity. Miraculously, right after that immunity ruling and right before he gets the official nomination for president, he's two inches away from having his brains blown all over a stage on live television in Pennsylvania. Tucker, could you please tell, explain to people how you could see something so horrific coming? Because you did. Well, I mean, it, I'm terrible at predicting the future. I don't think I've ever called a political race correctly. Um, that was <laughs> not even a prediction. It was just looking at the trend lines and the attacks on Trump increased in desperation and severity, intensity, ruthlessness pretty consistently over the past eight years. And it got to the point where they're trying to take his life away by putting him in prison until he dies, which they're still trying to do on utterly fake charges. And that wasn't working. He was becoming more popular, you know, the more they persecuted him in the courts. And so there was only one option left, and that was to murder him. And the Biden administration allowed him to get shot. That's a statement of fact. They allowed this. The Secret Service 
is part of the executive branch of government. It's controlled by the Biden administration, the Harris Biden administration. And they've withheld Secret Service from Bobby Kennedy up until very recently when Trump demanded it um, because they were fine if he got murdered. They withheld Secret Service from Donald Trump and they gave it over to that fake, horrible, fake doctor lady who's married to Joe Biden who was having a rally the same day with more Secret Service protection than Donald Trump. And they ignored, of course, this building 140 yards away and where you could sort of easily hit the man on stage. They ignore, I mean, I've been to a million events with Secret Service my entire life and I've never heard of anything like that. So they let this happen. They could say it's unintentional. It doesn't matter what the intent was. They let, they allowed it to happen. And they've never been held to account for it. Republicans in the Congress seem to have forgotten it happened. The country seems to be forgetting it it happened because of the media blackout on it. But it's really a pivot point in American history. You can't allow your political opponent to get murdered because you don't like him, but they did. Tucker, what comes after this? Because you you mentioned a pivot point, and this is where, I mean, people can call it a black pill, whatever they want to call it, but... I'm trying to explain to people the imprisoning of Republicans, the attempted assassination of Republicans. You can convince yourself all day long this is going to stop once Trump is done, whether that's four more years in office or loses an election. But we obviously don't work that way politically. Countries don't work that way. We've entered a new phase, and this is kind of how it is now. Am I wrong? It seems to be. I mean, I I should keep a list of all the Republicans and conservatives I've interviewed who are on their way to prison under Joe Biden, you know, but it's not a it's not a small list. And a bunch of them I know. Um, I, kn- I personally know more than five people who've been to prison in the last few years for political crimes. So that was unimaginable in my youth. It was unimaginable 10 years ago. It's happening. I don't know that it's going to slow down anytime soon. I'm not sure exactly how we should respond to it other than to name it, to say out loud what's happening, to be honest about it, not hide it. Um, I, I think it's reawakened all of us to the importance of our families and of God and the people that we love. Like it's, it's pushed a lot of us back to first principles. I think it's a good thing. You know, I mean, if you're fat and happy and rich for too long, you can kind of forget what matters. And what matters is God and your family and your friends. First, period. And so I do think there's an upside to the chaos. No one ever says it. It's not all bad. Nothing is all bad. People get terminal can- cancer diagnoses mm-hmm. and they become, you know, deeper, happier people in some way. I've seen that happen. So there's always an upside to tragedy. Mm-hmm. And I think we should meditate on that a little bit. There was an upside to COVID. Uh, I'm sure you, the same thing happened to you. You get stuck at home. You can't do anything. And all of a sudden you rediscover, oh, I really love spending all day with my wife and kids. You know what I mean? So like mm-hmm. there's good... There's a good side to this. Speaking of, of families, trying to wrap this thing up here, uh, it's family, uh, the family unit, God, husband, wife, it seems like so much of our culture has just kind of accepted things that are so far from that. And even so much of the right, so much of the Republican Party has simply baked things yeah. into the cake, especially when it comes to things like human sexuality. Honestly, the the strongest stance you can get from 99% of Republicans in office or running for office is, we don't want men in women's sports, as if that's somehow somehow pushing back on the culture. How about just the fact that dudes can't become women, period? Why do we give so much ground? We just constantly give ground, and then we'll fight over a little slice of what they've taken. Well, you know, I think that's changing. I mean, again, and I don't, I'm very pessimistic in Scandinavian and Scandinavian and morose and dark. And when I used to drink, I would just <laughs> stare sadly out the window. You know what I mean? And sensible on vodka as it rained. So like, I'm not an optimistic, cheerful person really by my nature, but I have to say, I interviewed someone this morning, this morning, who's a well-known person who looked right into the camera and said a totally normal kind of not political person who said, well, God's in charge of the universe. The husband is in charge of the home. Those are the leaders. And then, like, government's kind of an afterthought. It's like, five years ago, you couldn't find an American, except maybe in the Amish community, who would say God's in charge of the universe, the husband's the head of his home. You weren't allowed to say that. And things have gotten so crazy that I think it's reminded people that this is all fake. And if they're going to tell me a man can become a woman, then I can be equally bold and say something that's countercultural but true, which is that the nuclear family is the only way to happiness and stability. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. 
and like not be embarrassed about it. So I see people much more honest than they've ever been, much bolder in expressing what they believe. And I again, I think there's a huge upside to the obvious sadness and chaos all around us. And it's normal people who are getting bolder and bolder and bolder, which is nice. Yes. It's not just people like you, me, do with what we do. That's what that's what I find inspiring. Anyway, I need to let the man go. We have a live tour September 18th in Houston. I will be on stage with him. In fact, he has amazing guests all over the country. Go to TuckerCarlson.com. Get tickets. Art of, Art of the Surge at TuckerCarlson.com. Tucker, I'll see you in like a month, my friend. And honest, this is sincere. I don't know if we're still on camera. Thank you for doing it. This is going to be super fun. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.